25 micrometers in diameter and nitrous oxide causing 50 deaths a year. This is as close as I'm legally allowed to get to Heathrow Airport. We're on the perimeter road around Heathrow, that big corner there. And just here, that's where we cut through the fence and went across here to the runway. The organising phase is very stressful, very isolating because you can't talk to anyone else about it. And then the action itself is always very high adrenaline. It can be quite empowering. We arrived in a couple of vehicles, crossed the road, cut through the fence, then built the tripod out of the scaffolding poles, built the fence around the tripod, and then most of us were locked on with arm tubes or neck locks around the outside of the fence. So every part of the structure we built was connected to every other part, and that's what slowed the police down and allowed us to stay there for six hours. It puts you in a funny place emotionally to know that you've just done something that's really quite naughty or like seen as naughty or, you know, and seems to many people as a very like confrontational act. I really don't like being in trouble. There's nothing I can do Airport. or say to get you to come down and leave. The action was a last resort. I wouldn't be disrupting normal people lightly, but it was definitely born out of a sense of Nothing else I'm doing is making them pay attention. I've really been like hyperactive for years. I'm not very good at being by myself and I'm not very good at sitting down and chilling out. So my family said, what do you want for your birthday? And I said, I want to learn a yoga routine so that we're in my cell. I can do one. I didn't expect to, to be sent to prison. It's totally, totally unprecedented. I understand how important direct action is as a tool for change and you know looking at you know over across history all of our progressive social movements from you know the suffragettes to the civil rights movement um, you know direct action was was such an important part of that so when you know so when People say, yeah, but you broke the law. And I'm like, yeah, but the suffragettes broke the law. Gandhi broke the law. Martin Luther King broke the law. Sometimes it's all right to break the law. <sighs> the legal system that we have is just not equipped to deal with the issue of climate change. The necessity defence that we put forward, what the prosecution picked out of it was that we couldn't name the victims and that there wasn't any imminent, immediate threat to people. But you can't name who the victims are from a particular molecule of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Our legal system can't challenge that. People accept the fact that businesses would do anything to make money, but I don't accept that. I think killing people to make money is wrong, even when it's legal. We care about the environment, we care about climate change, but it's ultimately up for people and governments and MPs and decision makers to stand up and say, no more uh, airport expansion. I feel resolute. I mean, I have concerns and anxieties about what prison will be like, um, but I don't have any regrets. It might be an uncomfortable few weeks, but I get to walk out of it, and then I get to have a greater platform to be able to talk about the issues and to be able to build a movement that can help to stop the third runway. An extreme action provokes an extreme response. I woke up at half five this morning so that I could go and walk the dogs for oh, the last time of the prison and stuff like that. Yeah. Amazing. This morning I've been in that, did I turn the gas off? Did I put my, you know, out of office email on? Did I, you know, take my library books back? It's like, just the things I'm worrying about, just, you know, what, what, what do you make sure you have to do before you leave the house for a month? <laughs> I feel like we're in a win-win situation this morning. If we go down, I think it's a huge political mistake. If we don't go down, it's also a win for us because it shows that, you know, they, they are scared about, you know, the impacts of criminalising protest. We must put an end to fossil fuel culture. We must stop climate crimes from taking place. In order to do that, it has become clear that it is necessary 
for more people to break the law. I think the court realised that sending people like us to prison does not tamp this kind of thing down, it just makes it flare up and it just wasn't a good idea for anyone. Like happy and glad and relieved and positive, like I do think this is a victory, I think it's a victory for the movement and I also feel quite angry, I feel quite pissed off that um, she put us through that, she, th she threatened a custodial sentence three weeks ago, we've had to live with that. Yeah, but I realised when I walked in that I just wasn't, I just wasn't ready to go. I just wasn't ready to go to prison. And then, so as soon as they said, you know, suspended, it's just so happy. It's just so happy.